first story. OP and his wife neglected their son to enjoy themselves, now begging their son to include them in his life after he cut tiles with them and moved out. My wife 42F and I 45M were having dinner with our only son 23M two weeks ago. We're celebrating the fact that he got into one of the top 10 PhD programs in physics. We were having dinner with each other at our house. My son has no past issues. He's a smart, social, caring, and hard-working boy. He has a good set of friends and an amazing girlfriend. I am just completely shocked at what happened. The argument. Both of us were congratulating him on his achievement and told him how we were so proud of the fact he was the first to get a PhD in the entire family. He said thanks as usual. My wife reminded him to make it a priority to maintain contact with us when he moves to start his PhD. For some, he just snapped at that moment. He stopped eating for a moment, and with a stern look, he asked, Why? I didn't know why he was so angry. I just wanted to defuse a potential fight and jokingly said, Because we're your parents, silly. Then he said, Well, your job is done now. You don't need to bother me. You have more time for each other now. His mom asked what the matter was. He said he doesn't understand why he has to force himself to maintain contact with his parents, who loved each other more than him. We were shocked and asked what made him think like that. He went on his rant, and he said we may love him, but he was mostly a job for us that we needed breaks from. He mentioned that up until starting college, in the three to four vacations of two to three weeks we take in a year, we mostly went without him and dumped him at our parents' places. It's true, though most of our trips have been as couples since the beginning. This isn't his first time bringing it up. He mentioned that for the majority of the weekends we had, we looked forward to our date nights more than spending time with him. He said he felt that, while we did love him, he was always at the backseat of our relationship. I told him we needed our own couple time too. He said that he understood that, but it seemed to him that for moments of fun, we always preferred to spend them as a couple. The major thing that kicked me in the balls was when he said one of the major reasons he enjoyed college was that he no longer needed us for emotional support. He said he enjoyed spending time with his friends more than spending time with us. He said that's what he wanted to do for his four years. Before he left, he said he was tired of being part of a family that placed him second when it came to love, especially when it wasn't his choice and he wanted to be equally loved. He left dinner that night without saying goodbye and hasn't contacted us since then. Me and his mom have been bawling our eyes out every day since then. We can't sleep at night at all. The worst part is that since he doesn't need us financially anymore, he can cut us out of his life with no drawbacks. Did we mess up with him as parents? In our eyes, we did everything we're supposed to do as parents. We loved him, fed him, sheltered him, paid for his tuition, and spent time with him apparently not enough. Forgive me if I didn't articulate myself properly. It's hurting to say this. What should we do? Did we go wrong? Advice is needed. Thank you all. Update. Just last Friday, my wife and I came into physical contact with our son. A lot of stuff has happened between the time we last saw him storming out on us during dinner and meeting him last Friday. The first week, we kept calling our son five times a day and leaving him three voicemails daily. We never heard him pick up the phone. Within the second week, his girlfriend picked up his phone one day and told us he was living with her at her apartment, but didn't want to see us. She told us to give him time to cool down. Meanwhile, our lives at home were getting screwed over. In the first couple of weeks, all of our energy was put into getting in contact with him and having him visit us. We knew where his girlfriend lived, and my wife wanted to make a personal visit, but I warned her that showing up at his doorstep uninvited was only going to make the situation worse. We called our family members to persuade him to talk to us. It didn't matter if we had his grandparents, aunts, or uncles to call him, but his response was politely telling them. He was willing to talk to them about anything but us and apologized if he inconvenienced them. We realized our method wasn't working. We decided to go for counseling and therapy, not only to try to reconnect with him, but also to process our emotions through the difficult times. We slowly stopped overwhelming him with our attempts to contact him. Both our counselors suggested we respect his boundaries and let him make the first move. So we decided to leave a voicemail on his phone saying that we would be bothering him, but our door is always open to him. These three months were painful, to say the least. Our actual life decreased significantly. There was a time my wife started crying in the middle of it since it reminded her of the time we let him cry out his nightmare when he was three years old, but still didn't let him enter our room because we were in the middle of having sex and we wanted to finish. We didn't go on any date nights or outside of the house for that. My wife and I became home buddies. A lot of guilt was plaguing us. That guilt led to a time of introspection. 
We started doing research on family dynamics during our spare time. We asked ourselves questions such as, did we spend enough time with him? Did he feel like a burden to our relationship? Were we wrong to put our relationship first over a relationship with him? We wanted to be aware of what was going on in his life, so we used to follow him on social media. We checked his Facebook page every day. That was a big mistake. We found out that he proposed to his girlfriend last month, and she said yes. We found out through a post on his Facebook page. Yes, that's right. We, the parents, found out about the engagement of our only child through effing Facebook. Jesus, effing Christ. As if we weren't already in enough pain. We were stuck in the same cycle again in the past, until he finally reached out to us. We got a call from our son, this past Monday. And it was like a positive sign from the universe. He said he wanted to talk about our relationship. He asked if he could come to our house this Thursday with his girlfriend for support. We obviously said a resounding yes. We were anxious. I didn't expect it to be a tearful reunion, but it was definitely a good step in reconciliation. My wife and I discussed with each other how to lead the conversation. We both agreed to apologize for any anguish we caused, and to listen to what he had to say first. When did this Thursday come? We sat impatiently waiting for him after we came back from work. When he rang the doorbell and opened it, there was no sense of warmth from him, but a reluctant smile. His girlfriend almost felt sad being here. I had a feeling that night. They both refused any drinks we offered them. My son felt extremely uncomfortable being there. My wife told him that if he wanted to speak first, he should. This is what he said to us. He apologized to us if he caused us any emotional turmoil. He said his resentment started building up ever since he was little. There were a lot of things about our behavior that contributed to his point of view. He felt like having kids was more of a checklist that we wanted to complete than being actively interested in being parents and having a deep bond as parents. He said that whenever there was a disagreement with one of us, we would always take the other side over his. It felt like there was an us versus him type of family dynamic. Whenever we came back home from work, we looked forward to seeing each other more than him. When it came to spending time with him, it felt like doing stuff with him was physically and emotionally draining for him. We needed a break from him after having a break with him. One-on-one -on -one time felt like it was even more taxing for us according to him. He also said that there were times we wanted to spend with each other. He also said that we lit up when we wanted to spend time as a couple. He said that we put more effort into having our date nights and couple time than spending time with him. He said we seemed more upset when we couldn't have couple time over family time. The fact that we spent our vacation as a couple rather than as a family compounded the problem. He found it bizarre when we claimed we missed him after he came back from our trips. When he was young, he cried when we showed him pictures of our trips. We comforted him by saying we love him, but we need our couple time. He said that even made him more upset. He felt like we were using our parents his grandparents as our impromptu babysitters. He said that this feeling was further corroborated when visits significantly decreased as he grew older. He said he gave up on having a relationship with us when he entered high school. He said he put more effort and time into his academics so he could use his energy in a more productive manner than on us. He said it didn't come as a surprise that we didn't notice because we never formed a close bond with him to notice such things. He said his academics and friendships satisfied him more than spending time with us. Eventually, we were just roommates with him. He became apathetic when we didn't spend time with him, and he turned us down many times. We always thought he was too busy for us. He said that his bond with us weakened even more during college. He never missed us, and he got annoyed when we asked to meet him and complained about him not calling us often. He said he cried sometimes because he felt guilty for not missing us. He also said one of the reasons he did well in his academics was because he wanted to do well in other aspects of his life, such as following his passion in physics, and he wanted to lead a happy life with us, barely or entirely out of it. That's when he started tearing up at that moment. It still hurts him that the reason he was successful today was because he wanted to get away from us. He said he felt free when he went to college, and now he is soon going to graduate school this fall on the other side of the country. In the past few months, he has realized a lot of new things. He concluded by stating what he wants for the future. He said he was very grateful for what we did for him, such as paying for college. He will financially support us if we ever need it or be present when an emergency or family crisis occurs. Aside from that, we are not a priority in his life at all. We shouldn't be demanding phone calls or having him visit us anymore. He said he shouldn't be forced to maintain a strong relationship with us, but we never cultivated it while we raised him. He states that, family or not, an adult isn't obligated to have and maintain a relationship with any other adult. He said he was stuck in a relationship with us 
that he didn't want to have until he became independent. He no longer regrets his decision. He said that at the end of the day, we chose to be his parents, not the other way around. We could have found ways to bond with him and find common ground and stuff to do with him, so it didn't feel like a burden to be a parent to him. We never incorporated him into our lives and saw being a parent as akin to a job. We had every opportunity to form that close bond with him, but we never took it. Before he left, he said he wished us a happy and healthy life, and we're invited to his wedding if we want to come. Time froze after he left, and we were flabbergasted by what happened. It was like he divorced us. My door is always open to him, and I hope one day he can forgive us for the way we treated him. However, I don't know how to move on with this possibly permanent estrangement. Any suggestion? Thank you for reading this. Writing this alleviated my anxiety a little bit. Jack, I still love you son. Please come back. I'm sorry. Update. There is so much judgment from you guys. I believe that the spouse comes first. Your kids will eventually leave you, but your spouse stays with you till the end. I maybe didn't have a proper balance, but no parent is perfect. I need help getting him to understand that we love him, and that we're sorry. Second story. Delusional OP abandoned his wife and children. Now asking if he is a whole, and Reddit didn't budge. I 30M have been married to my wife 35F for 7 years. I play a sport professionally, so I am away a lot for training and games. But I still work hard to give my wife and two children 9M and 3F as much time as possible. I make a good salary so my wife is able to stay home with our kids, and I provide my family with a comfortable lifestyle. Last week, I arrived home after a training session that was cut short, and my wife was excited to have dinner as a family, as I'm not usually home before my kids are in bed. Here's where she says that I'm the arsehole. I apologetically told her that I had promised a teammate I'd go kick back at his place after training. I had really only stopped at home to shower and get ready quickly. She argued with me for like 15 minutes, and accused me of being an arsy hole who never sees his family and barely knows his own kids. I was very offended by this and stormed out. I ended up spending the night at my teammate's house, and although I've apologized numerous times, my wife still won't speak to me. Ada here. Or is she being dramatic about all of this? I barely get any time to myself, so I don't think it's unreasonable to want to hang with friends after a long day of work. Comments. Sarajil, 42. Your wife makes the accusation that you aren't around enough. Your response is to storm out and spend the night elsewhere. You kind of proved her point with that. Why T.A.? You didn't even give your wife the courtesy of discussing the matter before just deciding that you're going to your teammate's house. O.P., I am an adult. I can make my own choices. She's my wife, not my mom. I don't need to discuss plans with her. I told her about my plans. They were already made. They weren't supposed to be up for discussion. Sarajil 42 you're an adult who doesn't fully understand that marriage is not just having kids and letting your spouse take care of them while you run off to do what you want. Keep digging that hole, buddy. Adventurous Bet 9747. I am an adult. Are you sure? You don't seem like one. Lovelyon. Why apologize if you don't think you did anything wrong? Right there, Ida. But you don't think it's unreasonable to want to hang out with friends after a long day at work. It's not if all your responsibilities are being met. When does your wife get her unencumbered after work hang? You have a family. They usually require both parents to put in 24 hours of effort to work. In answer Jivitan. And he said in another comment that one of the kids has special needs. The OP is totally the ah. OP. I apologized because I'm tired of the silent treatment and just want things to be normal again. My wife is unencumbered practically all the time. Our nine-year-old is in school from 8 a.m to 3.30 p.m. and our three-year-old just started a private preschool program that's four days a week from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Her sister also provides childcare whenever she needs it. I am always putting in my effort. It just happens to be working to put money into our account, rather than staying at home with the kids. Lovely. Your replies make it sound like you don't respect your partner or her efforts. But try doing her job for a week and see how it feels. OP. I've taken care of them for a week before, during the off-season, and let my wife go on a vacation. It was easier than expected. It is definitely not a full-time job, especially now with the youngest in school. Update. Throwaway account for obvious reasons. I have been having some trouble with my wife of seven years lately. When we started dating, I was 18, and she was 23. Quickly, we realized that our values were different. She always wanted things to be more serious than they were. When I was 20, she got pregnant and refused to get an abortion, despite me telling her, I didn't want to be a parent this young. 
she told me to grow up. Two years later, she proposed to me she knew I would never propose, and we ended up getting married. Three years ago, we had another accident, and our daughter was born. I am a professional athlete and am out of the house most of the time, traveling to games and training. She is always angry with me. I give her anything and everything she needs amazing home, car, private school and services for my son who has special needs, private preschool, so she can get a break from the little one etc. But she is constantly complaining that my children barely know me, she never sees me, etc. We had a big fight last week that resulted in me spending the night at a teammate's house, and she's been giving me the silent treatment since then. Really, I want to tell her how she ruined my childhood by babysitting me before I was ready. But I know that would end our relationship. We've been together for so long, and I don't want to leave her, but I resent her. Is our relationship salvageable? Should I give up? Edit. For those of you saying I was an adult, 18 is still very much a teenager, and you know it. I have spoken to my wife on the phone, I just left this morning again for training, and was posting on the car ride there, and it was reassuring. She has no intentions of divorcing me, for those of you who say that is the best option. She said to herself that I am a wonderful father and husband, and she apologized to me. I don't know how Reddit's judgment of me can be so incredibly skewed. I just want some peace for my family. Edit 2. Well, I just got off the phone with my wife, or should I say ex-wife. She saw the Reddit post, as a friend sent it to her, I guess. She went completely off the rails, and I had to hang up on her at one point. She is at her mom's house with the kids right now. My life has been completely ruined. I am devastated and hope that we can somehow repair this. Thanks for the genuine advice given to those giving it. When she called me back after I hung up on her, she said she'd be filing for divorce in the morning. Comments. Christopherson Allen. Man, you sure did come here trying to make yourself look good after getting destroyed by your other post. OP. I'm not trying to make myself look good. Just presenting the facts of the situation and getting my thoughts and feelings off of my chest. No one needs to take my side, but this is how I feel, and I'm extremely distraught about the situation. Competitive Staff 38. Awa Didims. Get a effing therapist then. Lord Buff 74. That would eat into his training and hanging with the boys' time. OP. I don't think I'm the one who needs a therapist. My wife has suffered severe trauma too, from her childhood, when both of her parents abandoned her when she was young. She used to have a therapist, but stopped going. A lot of the problems started then. Josia Bartlett. Bro, just leave. You clearly despise and resent your wife. OP. I don't despise her. I do resent her, but I want to fix that. I don't want to throw away 12 years of my life. I also don't want to be paying her spousal support or child support, as I know she's not very good with finances, and I'm worried my children would not even see any of the funds. Melodic Salamander 55. You can file for full custody then, since you're such a hands-on dad. Rosalie 83. He's not around enough for that. You need to be present to be a custodial parent. OP. If we get divorced, I definitely will. There's no way I'm paying her child support, when I know she won't spend the money on my children. Melodic Salamander 55. How do you plan to win any custody when, by your own accounts, you're busy with your team? When's the last time you bought your kids' clothes on your own without your wife's input? How often do you grocery shop alone? When was the last time you attended a pediatric appointment without your wife holding your hand? OP. I have a great lawyer. I am a stand-up guy, a hard worker, and I have access to childcare when I'm away. My wife, on the other hand, would be unemployed with a history of mental hospital admissions in college. I would be able to get custody easily and already have private nannies and tutors lined up if needed. Do noise 98837. The facts are that no one stole your childhood, but you. You choose to have irresponsible sx. You choose to date and marry someone you don't want to. You chose to be irresponsible again and impregnate her again. You chose a career where she has to do 99% of the parenting. Throwing money at your kids doesn't make you a dad. OP, irresponsible SX. By that, you mean SX with a monogamous partner using birth control? Did that result in an unwanted pregnancy? Okay, she knew what career I chose before she pursued me, while I was still in high school. Husband and dad of the year. Also has two deleted follow-up posts contents, also deleted. How do you deal with the regret? In R ask parents. I wish I was child-free in R chill D free. Third story. OP's brother's girlfriend fakes a pregnancy to stay at her house. My F20 brother 24 has been on and off with his girlfriend 27 for a couple of years now. It's been the same song and dance. They're happy for a few weeks. Then something small happens, they argue. It gets really nasty, and they make up and go back to a loving couple. 
When I learned my brother got kicked out of his apartment and needed a place to stay, I offered him the extra room in my apartment, and my brother agreed to pay rent, help with bills, and pitch in with food. For three months now, she's been announcing she's pregnant. She alone will eat a snack box with 50 small bags of chips in a week. I tried to reason with her and get her to cut back not only from overeating, but she was running us low on food. But she insists she and the baby are healthy, and it's just cravings. Since last month, most of what my parents send to my house my mom is a couponer. So she bulk shops and gives away what she has too much of. My brother's girlfriend is the first to get into it, and a large portion of it is gone by a few days to a week. From a 24-case monster the energy drink, if you're not familiar, eight will be gone in a week from just her. She eats a hell of a lot of food too, most of which no pregnant woman should be consuming so much of. And yes, I know all pregnancies are different, but words can't explain how much she eats in one sitting. So, today, I saw her drinking coffee, and after her second cup, I asked her if she should be drinking so much, and she said her doctor told her it was fine, and she had no worries. When I suggested she take on a healthier diet for the baby, she just scoffed and walked out. I went and asked my brother if he'd been to any of her doctor's appointments or even seen a positive pregnancy test, and he said he hadn't. I confronted her about it, and she said she didn't have to prove anything and started to get defensive. I told her she needed to show a test or some proof of going to the doctor, or she needed to move out, as she doesn't help at all. My brother started defending her, and changed his answer from not seeing any proof to seeing her pregnancy test. My parents got word of what I said, and my mom says I was in no place to say anything. Every woman's body is different, and I wouldn't know since I've never been pregnant. Ada. Verdict. NTA. Edit. I did talk to her a while ago about getting a job as well as helping out financially and she said she'd start and never has. Right? So based on the majority of the comments, I overstepped yes, but I'm going to go with my gut on this one, and give them their 30-day notice, and call it a day. I'll for sure update you guys in a month when they're to be gone, and let you all who's interested know what's happened by then. I keep repeating myself. Let me add that my brother knows everything I've said the excessive caffeine, no ultrasound etc. Yes, my brother still buys her tampons monthly, and I know this because he goes with me when I buy mine. No, I was not faking concern about the coffee comment. She drinks two cups of coffee a day, along with a monster that's a ton of caffeine. Update. Okay, so I gave my brother and his girlfriend 30 days notice, and they were to leave this Friday. But as of last Friday, I have my place to myself again. Basically, they fed me a bunch of lies since I gave them the 30-day notice. First, it was, she can't get an appointment or an ultrasound because of all of the COVID patients. Then, my brother's girlfriend shows me a sonogram picture from her phone that I later found on Google Images. I asked why it was on her phone, and she said it was emailed to her after her doctor's appointment which she couldn't get. Then my brother brought home baby clothes last week to sell the lie, I guess. But they weren't clothes for a newborn. It was a lot of 9-12 months and 2 months. When I asked him why there were no proper clothes for newborns he said. So he can grow into them. I was told she was pregnant with a girl. I didn't bother to ask any more questions because I knew it was going to be lies on top of lies. Then Friday, I got home to find them arguing and at each other's throats. Eventually, I called the cops because they weren't letting up. At this point, they had both come to terms with the truth. Brothers, truth. His girlfriend is the reason he was kicked out of his place. She needed a place to stay because her parents kicked her out. So she forced him to let her stay at my house by faking being pregnant. He said after the first month, he knew she wasn't pregnant because she got her period. But she forced him to keep up the lie, so I'd let her stay. GF's truth. Brother invited her to stay at my place, and to make sure I wouldn't say no. He told her to fake a pregnancy, and I'd be sympathetic I won't go into detail. But I'm 100% certain that part she said was true. And I wouldn't question her using tampons, as he'll make up a lie for her. She said he told her to eat up all of the food because it'd make it all seem legit. So, that's about all. I'm still unsure who's telling the truth, but they both got all of their belongings and went their own way I assume, so it's not my problem anymore. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.